family similar to what we're doing. So you can also save money by doing this. I think that's a big inspiration for a lot of us um, during this time is to save money and also eat healthy. So we try to make it something that each of us can decide what we want to add to the garden space. For me, I feel like it's something there for every single person. Um, I like to harvest. I also like to um, plant. I like to water. Kingston, what are some of your favorite things to do? Oh, so he's a, see, he's more into the beekeeping than I am. He's ready to jump out. And the bee yard just gives kids so much confidence um, when they're out there and they're able to see that they can do, do so many wonderful things. So um, hopefully we'll be able to open some classes up this year um, and show kids the power of the bee yard and just that confidence that it brings once you're out there and seeing exactly up close what the bees do. So you definitely want to make this a fun activity. When you go outside, have some fun. We like to do things project by project. So right now, we actually were one of the recipients in Forsyth County for the Ag Ventures Grants. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> so what we're planning on doing with that is actually increasing, increasing our CSA. Um, if you don't know, CSA is Community Supported Agriculture, and it's a huge part of our local economy because we're able to supply food through a community base, um, and then we get all those healthy, good, locally grown products that keep us keep us healthy and well. So um, that's one of the things that we want to actually do is be able to increase the amount of food that we're um, pushing out into the community. We're, we were actually able to serve the Raleigh-Durham area, Forsyth County, um, Charlotte, and High Point um, last year. So with this uh, greenhouse, we've already started. We have so much to share uh, with how we're going to be able to do this. And we have a whole process that we've created, but we'll share that later on. So what you wanna do definitely is think about your space and what works. Everybody's space is different. Some people might be working on a front porch or um, a, back, a backyard like us or, or a, piece a piece of land. They might have a piece of land that they're actually actually go, um, growing on and be able to really visualize what you're doing. So what you want to do with that is really write it down. Planning is an essential part to having a successful garden and creating that canvas that you want to have. So I really like to visualize what we're doing. And um, vision boards are a good way to do that. You can actually create pictures and <clears throat> put pictures on your vision board, board and show exactly what it is that you're trying to grow for that season. So normally what we do is each season, we kind of map out what we're planning on doing. Um, infrastructure has been something that's been pretty huge for us in terms of trying to get a really solid um, plan down on how we're going to be most economical with our setup. So um, start with what you have. So draw it out. Um, you can actually, there we go. So you can actually, so you can actually draw everything out. Um, again, we like to use the vision boards. It's something fun that you can do with a family. You can show exactly what vegetables you're looking to produce. You can show if you have beekeeping goals um, and really just make it real. Hone in on exactly what it is that um, you like to do. So um, this is a little motivation here. This is one of our favorite books that we look at when we're beekeeping and it has so much information um, inside of it. This book is called Two Million Blossoms. And it has, it has a business in there too. Yes, our business was highlighted in this magazine. And it talks a lot about native bees, which um, we're going to touch on in a little bit here. Um, it is a lot of information. So if you want to take notes or, you know, some of the literature and that type of thing, then that probably would be a good idea. But Two Million Blossoms is such a great um, magazine. They support diversity, native bees, and it just has a bunch of great information if you want to learn more about bees. So remember, have fun with this. This is definitely something that shouldn't be stressful. It should actually reduce stress and um, be a fun, fun activity for you in for you and your family. So some of the things that when you're thinking about, when you're looking at your space is number one, you want to look at your farm site criteria. You want to see what size your space is. You want to take a look at the soil conditions in your soil. And a cooperative extension is a great place that you can go and get your soil tested. Um, it's pretty much free during the period of time coming into the spring and summer. 
So um, you could go over to their office, pick up a box, get a sample, and then you can see what it exactly is that you need to do with your soil. North Carolina is a wonderful place to grow in. It's a wonderful place to garden because it actually pretty much has two full growing seasons, which are coming out of the winter, and we still have food. So I wanted to um, get a little bit into what's going on right now. Right now we're going into spring and I wanted to talk a little bit about succession planning. I think succession planning is one of the best things that you could do to keep a continuous food flow going throughout the seasons. Um, lettuce is one of the things that you could actually pretty much almost grow year round if you do succession planning properly. So this is just a great tip to grow throughout the season. And you can add color and um, different types of beautiful wow. textures and flowers to create your own garden bowl in your backyard. Thank you. So let me go down here a little bit to... So what you wanna do is you wanna, with the succession planning, if you start sowing seeds the first six weeks before the last frost, so you would sow your first six, you would sow your first seeds six weeks, six weeks before the last frost. Then you wanna go in every 10 to 12 days throughout the, throughout the spring. And then that will give you, right, that will give you a beautiful garden, beautiful colors, beautiful textures. And that will be a great way for you to grow all through the season. So succession planning is definitely something you can do with flowers as well. And this can go all the way through fall with the flowers. So if you plant those, um, I say about every two weeks, you can switch up plants. Um, if you want to do a pollinator garden, then you would just start with your sun. You can start with sunflowers, then go to uh, marigolds. And if you want to go to another plant or on um, pollinator after that, then that's pretty much how you would get flowers that will come in throughout the fall. And it's so pretty seeing those colors change throughout the season. We've enjoyed doing that for the last couple of years and it's been amazing. Um, it's definitely a place to garden to awaken your senses. Again, Kingston and I love sharing the experience of being able to go out. And agriculture too. Yes, agriculture. yes, agriculture is definitely a beautiful, beautiful way to um, share with your families. And we definitely feel like the more families in this community that are planting seeds and beekeeping and gardening will be definitely a victorious moment, especially now. Um, it's definitely something that is becoming more and more important in understanding our local food chain and really protecting our small farmers and really what better way to get involved is starting on your own. It also helps you to get so many resources in your local community when you're planning these type of things, because now you've connected with me today, you can easily come to the market and say, um, I have a question or um, how do I go about finding this? And it's such a great resource when you're able to really tap, tap in on your local farmers in that community, because there's so many things that they can teach you. There's so many resources that you can learn um, who has the best hay and, and you can see exactly where your food's being produced, where they're actually getting some of their resources from to have the freshest things um, in their gardens. So I really wanted to touch quickly on, don't forget about the native bees and plants here. Native bees and plants are such an essential part about our gardening experiences besides growing herbs and vegetables. I really think it's important to get a good understanding of native bees in this area is because we actually have 560 native bees in North Carolina. Um, I think that is a lot compared to the fact that it's only 4,000 bee, uh, 4, native bees in the species of native, native bees in the United States. So 560 bees right here in North Carolina. And this year I'm kind of getting on a mission to actually identify more of those bees and visually be able to show people more of the native bees that we have here. So 4,000 4, in the U.S., 550, 560 native bees in North Carolina. So besides, um, you know, protecting the honeybees, which are also essential part of our food chain, we also have to take a deep consideration about native bees and native plants as well. So I'll go over a couple of types of native bees that we have here in North Carolina. The sweat bee, I think a lot of us has, have seen that bee and we don't even realize it. 
It's a pretty small <laughs> bee. <laughs> Carpenter bees, um, of course, I think a lot of us have seen some of those different types of species, which they are not social bees. Carpenter bees are not social um, bees, so they don't create a colony. Um, they actually will live underground and come from underground and they will live independently, opposed to the honeybee, which has a full operating colony. They're very social and their social structure is just a big part of how they operate as a whole. So bee hotels are a great way to add to your garden to support some of these native bees. We've actually um, added a couple last year and it's good for them to actually nest in. Some of them are able to lay eggs inside of them. So you can look at ideas on how to build bee hotels if you're that creative. Or um, a fun project that Kingston and I did last summer is we actually created a bug hotel and um, it was able to house ants and oh. worms. And it was just a really cool way Spider. to take spiders right um ladybugs we attracted ladybugs um i'm not sure if we got fireflies but it's just a great way to really attract beneficial bugs to your garden and it's also fun to build um, with kids and a great project to use old materials that you have laying around um it, it's a good way to make use to them but definitely make sure you are careful of snakes with it because it can be low to the ground and you don't want to put your hand in there. Right. Sometimes they can hide under your uh, house. So I want to go back up to um, the more backyard yards, growing food and planting in this community, the better it is. It helps really build a strong sense of community, a strong local food system is definitely, I feel like our future. I feel like it's so important to us to be connected again to our large um, small farmers and what they're doing, what they're doing on the local level in terms of food and um, community in that sense. So definitely reach out to any farmers that you can and see if you can come out for a visit and actually get involved with what's going on besides starting your own garden and again, that can totally give you all the resources that you're looking for to start your own garden. You can ask questions and really get involved with what's going on in your local food system. Even you know what you're playing, even you know what you're eating every day too. That's the point where farmers actually eat their own food actually. Right, right. So farmers are always having the best recipes because they're cooking a lot of what they are growing themselves and we have come up with some phenomenal recipes that i try to share as much as much as possible so um a couple people wanted to know about pollinator plants for your garden um marigolds are definitely one that we enjoy adding each year it helps it helps with the uh, disease pressure and it's just such a beneficial and beautiful plant to look at mountain mint is definitely one that I like to grow here in North Carolina. It grows very well. She likes to grow it a lot. And I also like plants that can be used for medicinal purposes. So you also wanna make sure you're thinking about what exactly your goals are. Do you wanna just attract pollinators? Are you thinking about uh, food specifically? Are you trying to grow a herb garden, um, kitchen herbs? There's so many um, different things you can add to best fit your own personal needs. So you can do fruit. Um, medicinal herbs, bee balm, um, mountain mint, coneflowers, zinnias, black-eyed Susans, which we grew last year, echinacea, asters, and of course, lavender. lavender. Lavender is definitely one of our favorites. And um, I also wanted to mention dandelions are the bees first first food when spring hits. So also think about the fact that a little bit a messy yard is okay. So we want to have compassion to some of those neighbors who might be having a couple extra leaves or dandelions and the wild violets are growing a little bit. We want to consider that sometimes those people are really trying to support the pollinators and help them keep that first food source going. And with dandelions, you can do some pretty fun projects. Right. So we like to use dandelions are actually a, um, medicine. a medicine. It's actually a medicinal herb and it's also edible. So the backyard can also be a great place to go out 
and forage and figure out what type of plants do have more purpose. More mushrooms too. Mushrooms definitely are, are more than a weed. So um, I hope this kind of covers some of the things that you know you're looking for, and I'm definitely open to answering any questions. I've actually created a um, spring planting guide for a home vegetable garden, and it has everything listed here. But what I'll do is either send this over um, through an email to Renault Deville, Renault Village, but I'll go over it really quick, and you can write down some of the things that are on here. And this way, this will help you plan out what's coming up and what you can plan specifically right now to start off and you can get going on all of these things pretty much right now so I'm going to go down that list if you want to write any of this down then um, you can again plant a lot of these by direct seed right now so broccoli brussels sprouts and those go from March 15th through the 31st cauliflower again March 15th through the 31st you can do your cucumbers pickling and then for your succession planning succession planning you can do the lettuce again is phenomenal for that kale mustard greens onions swiss chard chinese cabbage kohlrabi beets and asparagus so that is a pretty much a complete list of everything that we can grow right now in our zone for the weather that's happening right now. This is everything that you can use for your succession planting. Every lettuce is listed here and we'll get that list to everybody. And once you get um, that going, then I hope everybody's garden is full of color, beautiful, everybody's sharing. Um, I love the sense of sharing and I just love the old school ways of community and really being able to go to your neighbor and exchange things in a barter system and just the joy of family and planting seeds, I still think is a beautiful thing that we should all appreciate no matter what. And Kingston has definitely been a phenomenal sidekick to my adventure in farming. And um, he wanted to show you all uh, one of our other guests. We got another special, special guest though. And that's another project we've been working on during spring. So Kingston, let's see, what do we have here? so we've got some uh baby chicks that we've been hey april so we have some baby chicks that he wanted to show you that we've been hatching out in our incubator and we had a couple little sick chicks we've been taking care of and um the farm is definitely full of life right now the chicks are coming in the eggs are full you can come and visit us over at the cobblestone market and um you know check out what we're doing for this summer with our CSA and also the project with our greenhouse and, and everything that we're trying to build to um, add to our community food system. That's the best that we could do is just to keep working on it. So um, I'm open to questions now. If anybody has any, I was trying to stay focused and not read them during the talk, but uh, we can go forth with those. Someone was asking about any favorite companion plant pairs that you recommend. Um, you know what, for me, I do like to do more companion planting with uh, fruits and well, with my vegetables. So the three sisters is, is always a good idea. But for me, I'm more of a um, vegetables, you could do beet, celery, chard, spinach and onions, you could do a B a B hotel. Somebody owns a B hotel. Oh, uh, beans, that. lettuce, onion, peas, peppers, and tomatoes. Cabbage, carrots, chard, lettuce, and peppers and tomatoes. So those are wow. some of the things that you could grow. All of those things we pretty much grow each year. Um, right now you can actually do the beets together, the onions together. So if you're growing a lettuce, if you're putting it in a shaded area then that would be the best way to get it through the heat. You know, um, most of the time I don't fully go out to the summer. So you want to get on a succession planning right now if you want to, you know, make it through spring and you get through part of the summer. Um, this year I actually cut down a tree. So I have more sunlight in the area that was kind of shaded last year. So I'm hoping that I can go um, longer with the lettuce because I can actually spread it out into a more 
shaded area and see how that goes. Yes, so we do yes, compost. Yeah, we actually do vermiculture for our composting. We have a lot of worms too. <laughs> yes, Welcome. yes, so we do. We have a lot of worms here. I actually used to be very afraid of worms. I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> but I could not, I could not let this little guy see me scared of worms. So I couldn't let him see me do it. So I now I'm picking him up. And um and I'm I'm I have a whole worm bin. Actually, we just made a new project, which we use old shroom cubes from Barland Farm, and we made it into a small composting bin. And we feed it toilet tissue rolls, which I'm so happy to be able to get rid of some of those, and yeah. they're not going in the trash can. I feel like I feel like I'm excelling at life when I'm not just dumping all the toilet tissue rolls into the trash can. So we've actually been feeding the cardboard to the worms and they love it. So um, if you can get a chance to add worms this year, highly suggest it for some of that paper, paper towel rolls. They love to eat it. They will break it down and it's a way to erase some of that carbon footprint, which is like really big for us this year. Um, one of my hugest goals is definitely to eliminate some of that type of thing. I think it's so important. But you can also visit Cobblestone Farmers Market on Saturdays. They do have a place that you can compost your vegetables, right, Kingston? Yeah, absolutely. Right, so you can take a bucket during the week and just bring it on Saturdays. It's accessible. You can um, just come up, come anytime from, I think it's about 9 to 12, and just drop everything off there if you don't have a setup at home. But the worm bin is definitely one that's fun. Um, you don't have to have a major setup with that. You can use actually a tote two toads, poke some po holes inside of it, soil worms. Um, if you choose to, you can do it even smaller than that. But it's a good way just to eliminate some of the produce, especially for me. Like I said, I appreciate the paper roll products um, and not putting those in the trash can or recycling them. It feels good. Molly, you're doing something good for this world. Gosh, Kingston just makes you so, so hopeful about everything. It's finally, oh my God, I love that. He just warms my heart. Um, and I wanted to share this book also with any of those um, people who like to do growing herbs or medicinal herbs. It's actually called the Eyewitness Handbooks. These books are freaking phenomenal. This one actually has over 700 herb species inside of it. Most of them, excuse me, you can find native plants from North Carolina. It has a photo, um, a description of what it does medicinally, which yesterday I actually learned from this book for Scythia is a medicinal plant. Um, the seeds on it can be used for a number of things. And I have some bushes outside and I'm gonna um, tap into those this year, but it's just so much to learn in this book. So if you're looking for a book on specifically herbs, I know a lot of people really enjoy herb gardens. This one is phenomenal because not only do you learn about where they started, but you can learn about the medicinal purposes, what they look like. And um, maybe you can forage around and found some things that you've never really ran across of and known that they were actually a medicinal plant. So it really is good also for understanding some of the medicinal plants inside of medications. I really appreciate that aspect of it as well. And this year, um, one more thing I wanted to share is um, journaling is such a big part of um, gardening or farming or beekeeping or even your pollinator to garden. So just write down the things and each year you can reflect back on where you started from. I can't read, I can't see that whole question there. Can you, I can, it said, can you explain how you go from herbs to, to form? I don't know if you can. To, I, I think, how do you go from an, uh, the plant or herb to the actual form that you use for medicinal purposes. So I, mean, I think you make some balms and you make some. Right, so um, it's just so many different ways that you could go about it. Um, I do a lot of preservation. I hang some of the herbs. Some of them are dried. Um, each of them have different properties that you can use. Like some of them you, you might realize the leaf is something that can be used. And also the seed is we something that can. Some of these medicines are from Austin too. That some of them can be used. So it really just depends on what the plant is. The elderberry, um, that, that would be dried out once I pick everything or harvest everything that goes into a dry state. 
um, the peppers, a lot of that goes into a dehydrated state. So it just depends on the process um, of each product, specifically what I would do with it. A lot of it is dried, dried and dehydrated. Um, but it, like I said, it's just such an adventure with herbs because there's so many, like I said, learning yesterday about Prosythia, I had no idea about how much the seed was medicinal. And I really, really appreciated learning about that. And also the leaves um, have medicinal purposes. So plants can have, you know, the seeds can be used for one thing, the um, flower used for another, like the elderberry during the season this year, we'll start having some of the flower. And it's really such a delicate flower um, to use for a tea and it's aromatic. So it's each phase has something just to offer of the growing of the whole growing phase of it. Try and see if there's anything else we missed. Uh, someone's asking if you shred your cardboard before you put it in with the worms or you do no. throw it in there. Throw it in there, okay. Yeah, just um, you really don't have to shred it. They really like that grooved kind of cardboard. And sometimes you can find that inside of boxes, like more of the packing boxes, like Amazon box boxes. I know um, a majority of us do, you know, buy things online, but those grooved top edges that are on the top or the bottom of the box, they love that stuff. So you don't even really have to shred it up at all. Um, just stick it inside of it. If you want to break it down, you know, into larger pieces, that works fine, but normally you can collect, you know, the week's worth of rows and I'll put some in, you know, as you're going through the week, but they really honestly love to break that type of thing oh, down. And you get God. some of the richest nutrients. Vermiculture is one of the top oh, ways to feed, feed your plants. So it is a great way to add from reduction of waste and also food to feed back to your plants. And compost tea is actually something you can make from that. I look forward to seeing you too, April. I've missed seeing you um, this summer and spring. But Kingston, he, he's been dying to tell you all about the benefits of honey. He keeps mentioning honey. And, um, <laughs> and I guess what he's trying to mention, and he, he really doesn't know, is it's allergy season. Allergy season. I love it. It's a lot of pollen up there. Right, so allergy season is the best time to get hold of some local honey. Yeah, okay. allergy season is here. Check out your local beekeepers and don't forget to make sure. I'm trying to read. I can't read some of the questions. Yeah, don't forget to check out some of your local beekeepers here. Not only myself, but it's several other. Check those out for your local honey. Yeah, someone was asking about if you're a vendor at Cobblestone or other markets and what type of products do you sell? Yes, I'm a vendor. Medicine, Yep, so we are vendors at the Cobblestone Farmers Market. Um, we also will be heading to the Black Farmers Market in Durham this year um, for the spring and summertime. That'll be something new. We're excited to kind of venture out in that area and um, connect with more people in this world. But we also sell um, elderberry syrup, local honey. We do a scotch bonnet infused honey, which is delicious if you like Wait, sweet and the spicy. Honey is inside the uh, scotch bonnet. It's good because the fire tonic is really good. Right. So we also make a fire tonic, which is similar to a fire cider, cider that helps with a multitude of things. Um, we do have a full CSA 14 week program in the summertime. Again, that helps to support other local farmers. Last year, um, we had bar land farms included. Um, we had a couple other a couple other local farmers that were inside of it. And what we do is just try to highlight farmers and also try to make it a community effort to build up what each of those farmers in, are doing, and um, you know actually put some money inside of their pockets through a community and working together. So it was a really good experience. It's definitely a lot of work, but. Um, Yes, it was a lot of fun, but we definitely, again, truly believe the future is our local farmers in terms of food and healthy food. A lot of healthy food. We have to be healthy. We have to be healthy. We food a lot. Yeah. Um, someone was asking if you're organic. Uh, do you use fertilizer or solely compost? 
No, we solely use compost here um, by us having bees. We are not able to use a lot of different um, things. Realizers. Right, we're not able to do a lot in terms of um, definitely, definitely chemicals um, on any type of our plants. We're not able to do that at all. No. No, um, we do compost teas with our vermiculture being, and this year, like I said, we're looking to do some new things in terms of- No, we don't sell home and new things in terms of building up how much food we're producing. So we don't have a huge farm here. We are more of an urban style farm, but we have been able to make the best of our backyard space, which has been beautiful and such an example of what you could do, excuse me, with any type of space. Someone's asking if you sell pollen. Um, we do have small oh, yeah. amounts of pollen during the season. Um, that is something that you can, pick up at the farmer's market. We should have some here in the next few weeks, which is great if you have allergies. Um, it definitely helps consuming a small amount of that daily and increasing that um, as you go on through the weeks and will help you definitely have better, less symptoms with allergies or hay fever. I did not know that. I learned something. Yep, so consuming, yep, consuming a small amount of the bee pollen is similar to the honey and just take small amounts daily and um, that will help you have less symptoms. Hmm. Um, when you had mentioned Mountain Mint, uh, we learned I learned from a friend of ours that has a, a bulb business that if you take Mountain Mint and crush the leaves and rub it on your arms, it repels mosquitoes. Uh, right, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, a, it's so many things that you learn that you can do with plants. Um, like I said, the seed of the forsythia had you know a different value than the leaves and I just think it's such a beautiful thing when you start really getting connected to the plant especially if you're doing it for um, medicinal purposes and that type of thing then that connection to the whole growing process is really that energy I feel that you know is a lot, really connected to the products that we make you know being able to actually go out and get that honey and put it inside of there and um, nurture that process, I think is one of the most amazing things. And it's, and and it's the same way. The reason that bee keeping is bringing out our culture too, it does. Yeah, it's the same way with um, food and being able to have that connection to your food by um, being able to see who's growing it, you growing it yourself. It really just makes a great experience. Let's see, I don't know if we've, if we've got any more questions out there. Anyone? Uh, I, <laughs> I, I finally he says remembered, ready for questions. <laughs> yeah, I finally remembered it was Kelly Clarkson. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. She's yeah. a great So um, we met her um, last year, which she was really phenomenal. We were and she, that right. Was, that was that was right. We, so we learned that her brother actually is a farmer here in North Carolina. And um, that well, was no, why she. I don't, can't see. So that was a big part of why she was so attracted to what we're doing over here is um, she does have some family here. She said her brother was just one of those type of people who can just like grow out and throw a seed in the ground. And then, you know, he has just a beautiful harvest each year and he was really connected to it. And she was really such a down to earth person mm -hmm. and um, really just was just really awesome um, connect in terms of getting our story out and really showing the power of families planting seeds. And it just could not have been a better opportunity. And again, I was so proud to represent Forsyth County, Winston-Salem and really highlight it in a positive way. And I think out of everything, it's just been beautiful beautiful to see, you know, this, this town being highlighted in such a positive way. And now when people think about food, um, beekeeping, and all of those great things, the first thing they think about now, a lot of people is Winston-Salem and I don't think it could be, you know, any more um, better than that. And I, I, farming here, industrialized farming, of course, has been a few, huge part of North Carolina. But when we see now today, people being able to recognize small farmers, um, you know, across the New York Times, that's major. And um, like you said, John Kelly Clarkson, and when they think about small farming in the farmer's market, um, they think about Winston-Salem, and I think that's beautiful, again, considering that most of the time we think of North Carolina as more of tobacco and the industrialized side of it, but now we're seeing how important the families are in terms of food and how we see it here in North Carolina, too. So I'm proud of that. 
Awesome. Um, someone was asking if you did tours of the farm and how big your farm is. Um, right now, uh, the farm is a, it's a construction site right now. So I can understand <laughs> we, that. <laughs> right now, it's, 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 it's in a work in progress. We are in, um, we have never been so far ahead since we started and four years ago, we built a deck over the summer, I mean, over the winter time. Yes, we built a two shed. Um, we've added goats, a goat, a goat pen. We're working on a greenhouse, a hoop house. So. That's awesome. Sorry about right that, but right now it's just, right now it's, it's a, contr a construction site, but we're really excited to show what we've been working on and how great it will be to the community, how, how much of an asset it will be once we get it all together. Yeah, and, and if, if you, you know, really want to get some insights, you've got to follow her on Instagram. It's, you know, your Instagram posts are amazing. They're inspiring. Um, well, I appreciate it. Um, I really love the authentic feel of the Instagram and really, you know, sharing some of the conversations that we need to have about, you know, farming and and land and connection to land and um, family and all of those type of things. So it's really just been a great part again with connecting people, with connecting to people all across the world. I mean, it's been people in Italy and and um, just all over, you know, who who look for Mother's Finest for the wellness products, the advice, the realness, and um, a lot of people have been motivated to get up and actually go out and start a garden or or beekeep. And you know, the representation has been a powerful thing, and we're pretty proud of that. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, and, uh, April was mentioning about you're on Facebook too with videos yeah. and recipes. Um, right. So I do a lot of the recipes on Facebook. Um, I haven't been able to um, integrate that over to Instagram yet because. I'm more of a dash of this and a sprinkle of that um, cook. So I'm trying to wait to implement some <laughs> videos <laughs> that, you know, really kind of highlight. And I do, I've been doing some lives lately. Hopefully I can implement that into um, Instagram soon. But Kingston, actually what sparked that back up is I was looking and I saw a video, Kingston, I, I did, we did, we were making something, but um, I'm like, wait a minute, I need to get back into cooking because I really want to show people not only you probably were how to um grow the food, but also how to cook it and prepare it too. I think that's an important part of um, the whole process is the cooking and and figuring out what you can what you can do with all of the produce that you grow. A lot of people will come to the market and they're like, okay, now what do I do with everything? So. <laughs> <laughs> initially with the CSA I wanted to have uh, 14 weeks of recipes too hopefully this year I can do that but last year it was such a necessity with the virus hitting and people really like needing the food it was hard to kind of manage outside of just getting the food to everybody um, of course you have high hopes starting out and then the situation kind of just changed quickly but um, I still try to show people again let's be able to recreate it make it taste good because this guy's eating mushrooms and I'm pretty proud of that. He even eats <laughs> Brussels sprouts. So there you go. He's uh, the chicken of the woods mushroom. Yeah. He yeah. likes that one. <laughs> um, uh, Melissa was asked saying to have you tell us about the movie you're featured in. Oh, uh, believe in ghosts. Yeah, that movie. Right. So Believe in Ghosts um, will actually be at, um, I think it will be online first at Short Week coming July 2nd. So July 2nd will be the first um, public mm -hmm. viewing of it. Um, it's really powerful. I mean, it's a very, it's, it's a really it's moving. Black culture. Kingston, hold on a second. It's just a really moving um, movie. Um, Kingston actually starred in it. It's about family and farming, but it really just digs into the history um, of farming and um, showing where we are today and how hard we've been pushing to really, um, like Kingston said, to pre preserve part of our culture in farming and also to highlight it in um, a beautiful way and not to make it such a traumatic experience uh, for everybody. So for us, we see this as a beautiful thing 
We love it. Um, we think that it's something that should be shared all across the world. And the movie, you know, it was it was a it was a tearjerker. Once I watched it, and um, the final cut came in, and these are some really big folks who are working on producing this film. The producer, one of the producers, actually worked on Spike Lee's "Do the Right Thing." Um, Thomas, um, the videographer, was from. I think he's from the UK or he's over from uh he's from overseas but anyway um it was produced some of it was sponsored by Kodak Film it's shot on Kodak Film um later on I'll be doing a blog um interview with Kodak and talking about some of the moments were shot right here in Winston-Salem um North Carolina a lot of it on the east side of North Carolina which I was pretty proud of because I actually used to live on that side of town um a few blocks down the street from Wake Forest University so again, it was something I felt like really brought beauty to Winston-Salem. Like I believe when people think about one of those historical moments, once they see the film, be, believe in ghosts would be one of those things. And um, it was something that I feel like was so relevant in time with the way things were shifting um, coming into the coronavirus and also some of the racial injustice that was going on at the same time. And um I had never had any acting experience at all, really none at all. Um, so coming into that and, and stepping in such a powerful role was really, it, it was a lot of work. But again, I can't even believe at moments that I actually produced the whole entire film through a pandemic. And then there's something else special coming on up, up in the, uh, March, but you can follow the Instagram and check it out and see what that'll be. Somebody asked for the intro, man. I think somebody added it into the comments, but it's just been busy. You know, it's been busy for me. I've been trying to represent as best as I can and um, stay on top of things. It's a lot of work, but. You, you wear many hats. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of hats, but you know what? I'm hoping that in some kind of way it inspires other people to do some of the things that I'm doing currently. Yeah, and someone was asking when the film will be released again and what venue will it be released on? So um, actually, I think eventually it probably will come to River Run. It's probably going to go to Sundance, uh, Tribeca. It's, it's going to go pretty much to some of the major uh, festivals. But the first release that you can actually see before it hits um, here, a uh, short week, and that's July 2nd. So if you can, you can go to the uh, website at short week. Let Great. me look that up. Yep, short week. So short week. Um, July 2nd. It was some extras here that from that were from uh, North Carolina. They were kind enough to play um, roles inside of the film. And uh, one of them reached out to me like, when is the movie coming out? But um, I think people would be pretty proud of it. I'm proud of it, you know, in yeah. terms of really standing up and talking about some of the issues that have been, you know, faced in the past and how we're making it, it better. Because it is a new generation out here. And I'm really happy that we're able to do things like what we're doing now and show that community is still strong. We still need to work together in order to make things, you know, more positive and impactful. So I think this is an awesome thing. Yeah. Well, Samantha, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Um, you know, I, I really do feel you're, you're a bright spot in our community and I'm thankful that you're here. Um, I'm hoping we can connect more, especially as as things start easing up and, and restrictions start making it easier just to get together. Um, we'd love to have you over here anytime. Um, uh, Michelle was saying she'd love to share some plants with you. So she. Oh, I would love that. I am like I'm the way to my heart is definitely plants and seeds. Like <laughs> we are kindred I love spirits. <laughs> yes, I love sharing plants and seeds. That's the way to my heart. And I'll get that list over to everybody um, so everybody can have everything that they need to start right now. All of these things. You are so welcome, April. I appreciate being able to share this information. Hopefully, we are all prospering in our gardens this year. And um, the city is looking full of pollinators, full of bees and butterflies and just so many beautiful things. Let's make this town as beautiful as possible. I believe that it's meant to be that for sure. I love you all. And thank you for being such a support to me. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Samantha. Happy gardening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.